Hey everybody, welcome to Geeks Fun Alive. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking again about the UK drone review, but with a little slightly different twist. We've got a couple of these shorter shows coming up focused on particular parts of what actually happened. Uh, thank you very much for everybody that's already piling into the live chat. I really appreciate you coming in and joining us. Please, everybody support our new senior moderator, Tazzy, uh, in the chat. What have I done? Uh, I always I always pick the controversial people to become our senior moderators, but there we go. Uh, but yeah, Taz will be looking after you in the live chat. If you have any problems, it's his fault. Um, but yes, and if you're watching, um, do let us know in the chat what your thoughts are on today's topic, and we'll come back to the chat after the main um, story. Uh, but also, if you're watching the replay, the, the many thousands that watch these replays, do let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this in terms of the sub 250 gram side of things. But also, if there's any other topics within this particular CAA uh, drone regulation review that you want us to cover we do have some other shows coming up on um, specific topics like remote id and that type of thing as well so today we're going to take a focused look at how the uk caa review of uh, drone regulations could impact the use of sub 250 gram drones as well as give you the key information and breaking that down a little bit i will also tell you which questions within the caa response that you'll need to focus on if this is an important part of the drone world to you at the moment here in the uk there is a decent amount of freedom when it comes to flying your sub 250 gram drones you only need to register for an operator id if the drone has a camera so things like the dji minis the otel nanos etc those kind of camera drone models but you do not need a flyer id to be able to fly the drone you can fly with zero separation from uninvolved people and you can fly over people but just not over groups which there's a bit of a um, uh, sometimes an argument over what that actually uh, entails but you can go across to our, our drone rule videos uh, to find that out in more detail you're also able of course to fly within congested areas as well so pretty much as long as you fly safely and check your airspace for restrictions you have a lot of freedom within the sub 250 gram niche in the uk at the moment these are actually fairly recent permissions which came into force when we adopted the eu drone uh, rules in a mirror form here in the uk prior to that you would have needed special authorizations to fly in places like congested areas and separations would have been far greater there in fact there was no sub 250 allowances as such at all to date however this seems to have been working very well and in most terms really you do not hear news reports of people being hurt by sub 250 gram drones being flown in the uk or any other real issues so why are they considering making changes at all you might ask we do get lots of reports of people flying unaware of the rules, so they haven't gained requirements and done things such as the uh, gaining a remote, uh, a remote, <laughs> an operator ID. You also have many incursions on a fairly regular basis into flight restriction zones. It's rarely an experienced FPV pilot that we see at the end of those stories who pops up in the news and it's usually a sub 250 gram camera drone that's causing those issues if you look across social media as well it will only take you a few minutes I know this isn't a, 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 a fun thing to say but it, it really is true but if you look across social media it only takes you a few minutes to find lots of frankly idiotic drone flights often happening with these small drones but again even with this backdrop, the issues seem to be on more of compliance to regulation rather than needing to solve a, any kind of urgent safety issue or combat high levels of property damage. If you combine this with the research carried out by the CAA suggesting something like 53% of drone users have not registered, then you create a situation where they need to get more people registered and follow the rules. That is, of course, part of their role in all of this, so you would expect them to want to change things to make that happen that is one of the reasons you'll hear a lot of talk about the review simplifying rules and making them easier to understand the caa need to work constantly to get more people following the drone rules so in my opinion it is vitally important that we all give responses to the caa call for input that's why there's so many shows on this channel about this right now they are currently forming the base concepts and making decisions that could have far-reaching consequences the next level of this will be the public consultation which will be based on their recommendations but at that point the ability to change anything will in my opinion almost be lost 
whilst we're focusing on the sub 250 gram elements of the review today, there are lots of key points impacting drone users throughout the review document. So I do recommend you look through the whole thing, but it was requested that we have this particular uh, look at the sub 250. So we're gonna pull up the report again as we have on one of our previous shows, but we are only going very quickly into the parts uh, that actually, in my opinion, have the most impact in terms of sub 250 grams um, and uh, uh, really have, having a look at those areas. So the first area is when they talk about um, perhaps simplifying the operational categorization. So bringing open and specific categories uh, together and, and combining A1, A3 subcategories. I already think that there's a significant amount of unintended circumstances, unintended consequences that we need to consider in terms of that particular thing happening. Um, so we need to be careful. And that's one of the things that, I, that I'm, I think we need to be very careful of full stop across the board here is actually things happening such as extending the legacy and transition period and then having the unintended consequences of not being able to access sea label drones, etc. cetera. Um, so, they talk about simplifying those categories, but then they talk about the exclusions and they say at present users of toys, uh, UAS and sub 250 gram UAS are exempt from some regulatory requirements. However, feedback from stakeholders uh, suggests this is a source of confusion and misunderstanding, which in turn can lead to non-compliance. We are considering how to simplify the approach to exclusions from operational requirements whilst ensuring mitigations are proportionate. And that gives them one of their opportunities, opportunity for simplifying operational exclusions. 2.14 says specifically, some stakeholders find the definition of toy is prone to misunderstanding. This makes it harder for users to know how to comply and how to operate their drone safely and securely. We are considering whether an alternative approach for exclusions may be simpler. Options include exempting drones based on weight or other metrics or by improving the definition of toy. Um, 2.15 says as well that they're also evaluating whether exclusions for other for users of drones weighing below 250 grams remain appropriate. This reflects increasing capability of these drones and um, at the risks they pose, such as from entering restricted airspace or unlawfully collecting personal and sensitive data. However, we also recognise the need to take a proportionate approach to mitigating risks. We welcome evidence from stakeholders on whether 250 grams remains an appropriate threshold and the costs and benefits to different stakeholders from alternative approaches. So that then forms question seven, which should... The CAA simplify exclusions from operational requirements, the opportunity for and why, please describe any alternatives. And as I've said before, this question, as you can see here, as it's read here, as it's worded here, question seven, should CAA simplify exclusions from operational requirements? The question in itself doesn't really include the sort of, you know, uh, what, what you would expect. And although I think they've, they've brought a lot of information together in just a few questions, I think there is room for things to get lost here as well. So I think we need to be very, very careful. They are talking about the operational requirements and exclusions of the, essentially the benefits we have as sub 250 gram drone um, operators at the moment. And, you know, really, really, what are those benefits in terms of, um, uh, the wording and the principles that they've actually put forward obviously we we know that as i was saying before with sub 250 gram we can fly in the a1 airspace with zero separations fly over people um, you don't need a flyer id so you have those parts of it but they are also talking about further up here in terms of the um collecting unlawfully collecting personal and sensitive data that's a difficult one to cover because the, the unlawful collection of personal and sensitive data is already dealt with under other legislation, um, privacy, et cetera. There are, there are already fairly stringent um, uh, 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 things in place, laws and legislation in place to protect people on that. What you're looking at here, in my opinion, is the fact that obviously some people are unhappy that, that drones are being flown over certain areas, over certain buildings, that type of thing. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a response to that. Now, that isn't just the auditor issue, in my opinion. Um, I think that there's and we have a story on this coming up next week. It was supposed to be this week, uh, but, but this, this large story uh, pushed a few of our stories back a week where we talk about the wider uh, public reaction to drones. And actually, you will find a lot of the public 
in their very simple response when they don't understand because they they haven't been given the education on drones and, and their capabilities and what we're out there doing with them they don't want to see drones flying over their their property etc so it, it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out because i'm not entirely sure how they're going to separate the two things personally i think it's 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 it, to me it's a concern but again, question seven, if you're interested in, in sub 250 grams and keeping those um, uh, permissions um, alive is, a, is a, a very important one to put your views into that particular section uh, on, on the CAA uh, review of uh, UK uh, UAS regulations call for input. Question seven is a very, very important one for you to fill out, basically. So next is the transitional arrangement, which is uh, 2.16 here. And as described in the uh, the following chapter, manufacturers will need to ensure UAS are safe by design 2026 onwards, etc. Uh, and of course, we've, we've spoken about this before, where it's talking about the opportunity to support users of non-classed uh, marked UAS um, uh, drones. Now, the interesting part here is that they talk about the the transitional arrangements and whether or not the the need is there for uh, to actually update um, those class marks. Now, again, this is the question eight: Should CAA change transitional arrangements for users of UAS without class marks, and why? Uh, question of opportunity five. This is another important one because obviously, at the moment, sub two hundred and fifty gram drones have a blanket allowance. Have 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 a blanket. Um, 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 exclusion essentially so they don't have to have class markings even when the class markings were going to be coming in and technically they're still coming in in 2026 at the moment or whatever system they choose so you, we have to be careful here as well from the point of view that it, what they're looking at here is to change the transitional arrangements for users without class marks as it stands once we come into the the new c-class system Anybody with a um, a, a non-C class marked uh, sub 250 gram drone can actually still fly as they do now within the A1 airspace, fly over people, that type of thing. It, it, there was an allowance pushed in there, which is actually something that even the original EU regulations didn't have, but it's something that the UK put. So it's very important that we all put in question eight that, that we want to see that continue, basically very very important um, another exclusionary point which is at point 3.12 just looking at my notes there so we'll just scan down through this document a document that i've got to know very very well recently basically and this is actually going to be talking about remote id and at the moment the way that remote id is placed within the regulations um there is a um uh, an exclusion so as it says in the current regulations drones weighing less than 250 grams or classified as toys would not be required to meet some product requirements such as remote id and geo awareness as that geo awareness thing again however this approach may not fully address the risks presented by some of these drones for example some drones that meet the criterion could still be used to infringe controlled or restricted airspace or to collect private or sensitive data without consent in addition, the current approach to exclusions may be a source of confusion for users um, when making purchasing decisions or when understanding what type of drone can be used in different operational categories. Uh, to address these risks, we are considering whether approaching um, whether the approach to product exclusion for certain drones remains appropriate. Alternative approaches could involve extended sending some requirements such as remote ID and geo awareness to drones under below 250 grams with cameras. In addition, we could replace the exclusion for toy UAS with a criterion based purely on weight, okay, uh, to avoid ambiguity for users. However, we recognize that some exclusions are likely to be proportionate, for example, for very small UAS without cameras, okay. Uh, the optimal approach taken would be dependent on whether on what other changes to class markings are progressed of course as discussed in the prior section uh, in our decision making we will consider how to mitigate risks effectively and proportionately whilst enabling international alignment where valuable to do so so question 13 is should the caa simplify exclusions from product requirements opportunity 10 and why so again this is another important question i mean they're all important questions frankly but this is another one in terms of this sub 250 gram side of things that we need to think about it is a, 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 another major change that we'll see that really starts to push drones that are sub 250 grams to to really be the same as all others um, and that's a little bit of a concern so within those those few questions that we've had there we're basically looking at 
the potential that the sub 250 gram drones could lose the existing permissions and, and ex existing freedoms they have um that there could be more um, um restrictions in terms of privacy etc and supporting drones not breaking privacy legislation which is an interesting one and really I, I would love to see how that would actually work in practice uh, but also in terms of remote id coming into the sub 250 gram marketplace as well so i i, I think from though from that point of view those are the main questions which i think you you really need to focus on um in terms of the class marking system if we did see something happen would the sub 250 gram drones side of things actually become less important so for instance if you could fly your dji air 3 which is a c1 with the c1 um, um, uh, um, allowances here in the uk with those benefits would that start to negate the need for having sub 250 being completely separate the only difference you've got there is of course that the the sub 250 can fly over people whereas um the c1 um you wouldn't you would you would be able to have zero separations but no intentional flights over people i know that's splitting hairs but it is a bit of a benefit that you're losing and you would of course being over 250 you would have to have a flyer id although it sounds like from the wording here that they might be talking about bringing a, a, a the, the flyer id in for sub 250s with a camera as well so those are the things we're looking to protect those are the things which are important in terms of when you reply to this in terms of being a sub 250 gram flyer that you need to consider that you need to put forward and you need to explain clearly despite how generic those questions are and precisely why you feel that's the case of course we don't have as I say, we don't have sub 250 gram drones raining from the skies and hitting people on the head and that type of thing. The existing, the new system that's come into place seems to be working well. And why would a permission, why would a set of um, um, exclusions that were OK just a few short months ago to come in to come into force? Why would they suddenly be something which are no longer um, um, appropriate, basically? So for me, if, if I had to bend at all, and if I had to say from my personal opinion, I think a flyer ID is a good idea for people with sub 250 gram drones. There is there is absolutely no chance that when the 250 gram um, limit was being discussed around the world and when it was brought into these EU regulations that the UK then mirrored, that they had any idea that the, the Mini and the Mini 3, etc. were ever going to be as powerful, were ever going to be as good being sub 250 grams. I don't believe they ever thought that. So in some ways you could argue that there was no intention for that to ever for, for drones of that capability to ha ever have that kind of freedom but again we haven't had the issues we're not seeing the issues in terms of that perhaps having geo awareness might help from the point of view of having a a a, a geo fencing on on the drone that will stop you simply stop you flying in those zones but that's so complicated and so easy to remove and um, all, all of the, the different hacks out there have, have shown how easy it is to remove geofencing, how easy it is to switch from CE to FCC modes and, um, and fool the drone into thinking you're flying in a completely different country, etc. So to, to me, I think that going down the route of trying to restrict sub 250 is not really something that's on from the point of view of how the community have been flying those drones but i think we do need to take some responsibility for the idiotic flights that do happen out there and for the fact that um uh, these drones do an awful lot more than they were perhaps uh, when they're putting these in, into place than they thought so i think as i say having having a flyer id for uh, a sub 250 gram drone when you're already gaining an operator id i think that's okay because at the moment all you have to do is have an operator id and read the manual uh, it didn't even actually say that you have to understand the manual uh, to have the flyer id and to have to go through that multiple choice questionnaire which means that you understand the basic rules i don't necessarily have an issue with the rest of it in terms of changing the exclusions that we have and the permissions that we have as sub 250 i i don't see a need for it so if they're talking about keeping it proportionate if we get these answers in if we get these responses in to state that then of course we're going to be pushing them back in terms of being able to have to come back because they have said they're going to publish these the the responses they get 
um, in the same way that they did on, on the, the, tr the transitional period um, uh, consultation. So I think that we need to have a little bit of pushback from the point of view of being able to see those responses and show us the evidence um, for, if, if they want to go in a different direction. Okay, of the just over 200 people, and thank you so much for joining me here on what is a Friday evening here in the UK. I really appreciate it. Please do hit that like button because it does help spread uh, this video out wider whilst it's live, but also as a replay. And I would really appreciate it. We don't ask for much, do we? Uh, but we're going to come back to the chat now and just have a very quick look through at what people are saying here. The Coffee Varners, who is actually one of our channel members, good to see you. Uh, hoping the CAA sort their stall out before December. Um, it will be easy. It would it would be easy decision then not to renew uh, 250 gram CAA drone tax and decide if the drone is heading into the post Christmas skip. Well, I don't think we're going to see a response, and I don't think we're going to see anything happening that quickly because this is the initial call for input. We've then got to go through the consultation period. That consultation is then gone to. Um, be solidified into some kind of suggested change to the regulation and th 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 there are so many steps ahead of us they are talking about the dates they talk about are 2026 within this uh, which of course is now where the transitional period has been extended to so i don't think it's going to be that quick frankly uh, which is also potentially a good thing from the point of view that we've got till 2026 to worry about any real changes but um, if anything changes on that timeline i will of course let everybody know uh, looking at uh, other comments here, uh, Matthew Stratford, do you think this review is because of the audit chats creating a stink for us? I'm sub 240 grams and have both ID and license. Um, and excellent. Matthew, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's great to see new names in the chat as well um, over the last couple of weeks. I, I really appreciate the uh, everybody joining us. It, it, it's fantastic. Uh, Matthew, I, I, I think it has to have some bearing on it. I don't think that it, 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 it's a weird situation because you've got what is actually, from a representative point of view, a very small number of flights that happen in the UK which are being carried out by so-called audit channels with drones. Okay. In terms of putting those numbers against how many flights happen in the hobby every single day, even in the wider hobby, not even just camera drones, but FPV flights, Model RC flights, etc., of the people that are covered by the Damaris scheme in the UK, it, it's a tiny portion of them. The problem is, is that those videos have a very wide um, uh, viewership. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the whole sort of um, uh, freedom of speech type channels, etc., are very, very popular at the moment. Some of them do some very, very good work, but the, on the drone side of things, those videos get a very wide audience, get a very large audience. So actually what ends up happening is you end up having a, a fairly significant audience seeing drones being used to annoy people. Um, so I don't know. Is, is the wording within, within one of those uh, uh, questions, one of the earlier questions regarding um, uh, basically uh, the, the, the sub 250 gram drone side of things being changed to support legislation around privacy, is that, is that directly towards them? I'm not sure. It, it certainly feels that way, doesn't it, when you when you read it? But I'm I'm not entirely sure. But yes, I, it, it does seem to have a, had an effect, which I find slightly bizarre, as I say, uh, because it's obviously, in my opinion, from such a small user base. Basically, there are so many flights happening every day that nobody has any clue about that happen completely safely um, and have no issue um, whatsoever. Uh, drones eye view i'm totally behind easing on restrictions for fpv flight the visual observer requirement is the first thing i vote to go yeah interesting i don't see it happening uh, but an interesting one um tazzy our, 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 our one of who's actually our new moderator for this evening hi tazzy worth reminding peeps that they can pause filling out the call for input and go back to do it days later yes when you go on to the uh, the form um let me bring it back up uh, you can actually, you put your email, name and email address in here and you can actually, as it says here, save and come back later. So yeah, really good point there, um, um, Tazzy. Thank you very much for, for making it. David Webb, CAA has already made up their mind. The consultation is just a nuisance uh, that they must follow up. Yeah, in, in uh, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with that point of view because every, everybody has, has their own point of view on that. I don't agree with it personally, uh, but this, again, this is slightly different to consultation because it's a call for input. So it's, it's forming the initial opinions and concepts. They have also said, stated that they're going to give us, they're going to publish 
the responses. They're going to publish what they, how many responses they got, and and the and the answers. We had that, as I say, in one of the previous uh, consultations as well. And that in itself, to me, is enough for us all to be able to put this forward. Because if we all put our responses forward, and there is no evidence to defeat that, and the fact that they're stating in in the document that their that their recommendations will be proportionate, and the route the the concepts they choose will be proportionate, means that they have to show the evidence for that basically. And if they don't, they'll get called out on it. But this is part of that process of of trying to hold them to some form of account from that point of view. If this was going to be throwing our responses into a bucket and we never see them again i can understand that point of view completely i'd still disagree with it but i can understand it completely um, especially in the uk these days but it, it is something that that i think is worthwhile doing because there is there is some form of accountability in terms of how they're going to be able to combat uh, what we're actually saying uh, kayaking graham hi graham good to see you who are the stakeholders they have some clout with the caa yeah, the stakeholders will be a wide range of people um, from, you know, government departments, police, um, trade bodies, drone operators themselves, focus groups, stakeholders, uh, REEs, training companies. The stakeholders are, are, are a wide air, um, um, base of, 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 uh, of, of, of type, of user type and industry type. Um, and now they're coming out to the largest stakeholder is, of course, the, the hobby um, those that are using the drones on on a daily basis yeah uh, and uh, and as andy our, our other uh, senior mod there uh, the word stakeholder appears 42 times in the caa document the word drone 11 um yeah they, they use uas as 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 the descriptor for drone in the document as well but uh but yeah it's 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 an interesting one Clear fine, the CAA care, cared one jot about stakeholders, except Amazon, that they would have made sure the 200,000 of us knew about this consultation. I suspect the end goal is exclusion. Yeah, the, 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 this is something that I raised, if you remember, back in December when we had Callum Holland on from the CAA talking about the, uh, the document releases and getting some of the answers uh, back there in those interviews. And we did raise that why on earth doesn't the CAA automatically mail that now it's basically apparently in the way the system was set up that there's a there, there are privacy issues there etc i think you can just put a tick box when you renew your your um, operator or, or flyer id to say i want to receive the news etc i think that would get rid of it but there is the uk skywise caa skywise system and it, which is basically an active system that you have to sign up to to say that you want to get these kinds of updates um, and if you do sign up to that you will get it this did come out via the skywise system basically um mike west businesses have been lobbying the caa with regards to audits the company i work for is one of them that's why i'm so peed off with some auditors it's spoiling it for us all but hey the clicks yeah no in, indeed and, and 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 mike um i i've i've personally heard from many businesses large businesses who have um spoken to me about auditors and and how advice on how to handle them i suppose but also uh, voicing that they have spoken to mps they've spoken to government departments they've made complaints to the police etc um regarding that even those as i say because the all these audit channels have a very wide uh, viewership even those that actually haven't been visited yet that are worried that it might happen um which is which is which is incredible to me it's kind of creating its own beast really um so it, it is it is definitely something that's happening i've seen in some of the trade press as well um a couple of large commercial operators asking in their own trades press uh, because people have sent me copies of those letters where they've sent in letters saying we've had drones flying around surely this shouldn't be allowed to be flying around our private business etc what can be done to stop them so and, and that's part of the issue here is that if enough people lobby against drone use it, it in itself becomes public interest in itself becomes something um which 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 they're going to pursue it, it's as simple as that so yeah it is a a a a, a self um uh, killing prophecy unfortunately Simon Griffiths, after paying uh, 600 quid for a sub 250 gram drone, instead of using my Air 2, then joining FPV UK, I'll be peed if they change it all again. Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting. To, to me, th there's part of it, it, it from my point of view that I think, okay, why would you ask the question? Why would you say we're thinking of changing these things if, if you don't intend on doing it at all? Um, and, and, that, and that to me is, is something that I'm, 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 I'm slightly concerned about. And I don't like some of the wording, particularly aimed towards the sub 250 gram side of things, which hasn't showed any kind of issue, really. Yes, 
the vast majority of people and and it's something that you cannot deny um that, that actually pop up in the news uh, uh, as far as causing problems uh, flying in restricted zones um those are a lot of those are sub 250 but but then we have a system where you don't even have to pass the flyer id to have one so perhaps the proportionate thing to do would be to have the flyer id test requirement for for anybody that's in in a registered drone um so sub 250 with cameras uh, perhaps that might be a proportionate way of dealing with it legwork they won't bring any c marking rules uh, because that will just show uh, they were wrong to drop them in the first place i don't think so if you look at the um they're, they're looking to simplify them so essentially the, the concepts they're trying to put forward at the moment in that report is to simplify to essentially bring the c1 c2 drones together um, and and just have it as an under certain you know under 900 grams you can do this my problem with that is will they Will they level out the benefits more towards C2? Um, because I'm sure they wouldn't want aircraft that are C2 flying as C1s. So that, that again, un unintended consequences uh, concern me there an awful lot. But I, I, I think that they're, they're still open to that personally. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. Because again, frankly, if, if, you try and, if you try and put a, a sea label system in or an alternative system in and ask manufacturers to change things just for uh, uh, the UK marketplace, I think they'll struggle, frankly. That's just my personal opinion. Um, okay, so just a couple more before we, we head off. Um, Emma Chantel, good to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, people lobbying against drone use was inevitable. Given the auditors and the plethora of people on drone groups doing stupid stuff, uh, I just hope it's not too bad. Yeah, and, and uh, but again, I think we need to push against that. And I, I think we need to ensure um, that it's, it, it, it's, we give as much responses as possible. Then we've done what we can. If that doesn't work, it doesn't work and we can then sit here and we will and we'll have the shows and we'll say we we all put our responses forward and they didn't listen okay we will have empirical evidence that that's happening not that we don't already but um, um some could argue but we will have that evidence so it's that's why it's important to put these responses forward if we do not get involved if we don't put these responses forward then it, we, we we can't just sit back and say hey they wouldn't have listened anyway because we won't we, we won't know that frankly so uh, yes uh, Angus Cooper, I think the distances are um, between uninvolved people should be reduced or relaxed a little due to the odd occasions people approach us, um, not not confrontation. OK, fair point. Get that into the, your your responses. One hundred to one hundred percent. Uh, Simon Griffiths, why don't they demand a flyer ID, um, operator, operator ID at sale? They are actually considering something similar to that. There is, um, in, in our full video, and I don't want to make this show too long uh, for people to be able to keep up with afterwards, but in our longer stream um, earlier in the week, which reviewed the entire document, that was actually put forward in terms of actually when you turn the drone on, being forced to put your operator ID, flyer ID details into the drone and, and actually essentially verify who you are. Again, that opens up a whole other can of worms and unintentional consequences, etc. Um, but, but yes, but that, but that was suggested at that point. Uh, having it at the at, at the at, at the point of sale, the only problem with that is what what about secondhand drone sales? Um, uh, what about if it's not the person who buys it that's going to be flying it, etc. That type of thing. So, I think these all are, are are actually some really really good ideas. Put them and please do put them down on on your responses. Um, but you know. It is something which I think that uh, um, has has its holes as well. All of these do, basically. Excellent. Okay, well, there you go. That is basically the show for this evening um, for the sub-250 gram focus. I do have another one of these coming up, looking more in detail at Remote ID. Also, next week, uh, looking like Thursday evening, I'll be joined by Ian in London, um, who will be coming along and having a chat about his views on this. And that'll be a bit more of an opinionated, uh, opinion-focused show, whereas obviously normally I will run through these documents and tell you exactly what they mean and give you my general interpretation of them. We're going to let loose a little bit more and have a little bit more opinion on that particular show. So I'm looking forward to that. We've got lots of other topics coming up on the channel as well. So if you are new, do remember to hit that subscribe button. And uh, could the 200 people that are still watching um, do me a favour and um, please hit the like button on your way out. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and I'll see you next week on Geeksvana. Sean out. Yeah.